students today we have our last lecture of hydrogen chapter in class 11th so we are starting with the topic hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide its formula is h2o2 it is important chemical in pollution control for domestic as well as for the industrial effluents preparation of hydrogen peroxide how it is prepared the first method is from barium peroxide this is a laboratory method to prepare hydrogen peroxide in lab it is prepared by this method so for this purpose we will take hydrated barium peroxide which is bao2 dot 8 water and we have to make its paste in cold water in ice cold water will make its thick paste and then to that paste we are adding slowly 20% sulfuric acid on adding sulfuric acid to this paste what will happen see the reaction bao2 dot 8 water molecules are here in this case when we add sulfuric acid it forms barium sulfate white precipitates of barium sulfate will form along with this is formation of h2o2 hydrogen peroxide and these eight water molecules they will evaporate so white precipitates of barium sulfate are separated by filtration in this we are not getting pure h2o2 we are getting just a 5% solution of h2o2 second method by electrolysis of fifty percent H two S O four. If we take sulfuric acid and do its electrolysis, then also we will get H two O two. So the reaction here is when we are doing electrolysis of H two S O four, we get H plus ions and we are getting the bisulfate ion. positive ions and negative ions in electrolysis at cathode the positive ions h plus ions they will go because cathode is negatively charged so h plus ions at cathode will form hydrogen gas with gaining of electrons so hydrogen gas will evolve at cathode while at anode the negative bisulfate ions they will change to h2s2o8 plus 2 electrons this is per oxo di sulfuric acid so this compound is formed per oxo di sulfuric acid this is distilled with water this is distilled with water under reduced pressure so when we do distillation with water under reduced pressure then first of all the low boiling h2o2 this will distill first of all because its boiling point is low and in this way we will get h2o2 by doing electrolysis of sulfuric acid this is a second method 
moving on to the third method by auto oxidation of 2 ethyl anthraquinone so when we do auto oxidation of 2 ethyl anthraquinone we get H2O2 this is a new method and it is widely used in USA. Now first of all formula of this compound. This compound is anthracene. This compound is called anthracene. Now in anthracene, this is first position, this is second position. If we have C2H5, this compound becomes 2-ethyl anthracene. This will become 2-ethyl anthracene. But we need 2-ethyl anthraquinol. So here at these positions we have OH. So this becomes 2-ethyl anthraquinol. Name of this compound is 2-ethyl anthraquinol. Q0. So we take this compound and air is bubbled. When air is bubbled through this compound, it will oxidize this to 2 ethyl anthraquinone. 2 ethyl anthraquinone will form from here. 2 ethyl anthraquinone the hydrogen atoms which will come out from here they will combine with this oxygen and along with this the byproduct H2O2 will form so hydrogen peroxide will form when we are doing the oxidation of 2 ethyl anthraquinone so these are the three methods to prepare hydrogen peroxide first method is from barium peroxide by taking its paste in cold water and passing sulfuric acid through this we get H2O2. Second method is by electrolysis of sulfuric acid. When electrolysis of sulfuric acid is done we get H2S2O8 per oxo disulfuric acid which is distilled with water under reduced pressure and we get low boiling H2O2 distilled first of all. Third method is by auto oxidation of 2 ethyl anthraquinol. 2 ethyl anthraquinol is oxidized to 2 ethyl anthraquinone and along with this H2O2 will form. These are three methods to prepare H2O2. Now our next topic is storage of H2O2. How this H2O2 is stored? It is stored in colored paraffin wax coated plastic or Teflon bottles. Plastic or Teflon bottles. Because if there will not be a paraffin, paraffin wax coating in the bottle, then the rough surface of the bottle can oxidize this H2O2. It can decompose this H2O2. And when it will decompose, then water will form and along with that oxygen will form from H2O2. So that is why to have a smooth surface, the glass bottles are coated with the paraffin wax. Then some stabilizer is also added. It will, will start decomposing. The stabilizer will stabilize it. It will not let the decomposition of H2O2 to take place. Or a negative catalyst which will prevent the decomposition of H2O2. Example of negative catalyst are urea, glycerine, phosphoric acid etc so 
by taking these two precautions we can store H2O2 it will not decompose next topic after storage of H2O2 we have the structure of H2O2 structure of H2O2 it has a non planar structure there are two oxygen atoms linked to each other by a single covalent bond and this bond is called peroxide bond name of this bond is peroxide bond when the two o atoms are linked by a single bond and the two oh bonds are in different phase here this is the structure of h2o2 physical properties of h2o2 it is colorless in pure state colorless when it is in pure state but in liquid form this will get a light blue color it's a pale blue color liquid and it is completely soluble in water so miscible with water and is more dense than water more dense and viscous than water so these are the physical properties of h2o2 next we have chemical properties of hydrogen peroxide it is a very strong oxidizing as well as a reducing agent in both acidic and basic medium so first we are taking its oxidizing action in acidic medium in acidic medium it oxidizes first example i'm taking is of ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate h2o2 will oxidize this in acidic medium in presence of an acid h2so4 and it will oxidize this to ferric sulfate ferrous sulfate oxidizes to ferric sulfate and itself it will reduce to water it will reduce to form water second example to understand oxidizing action of h2o2 in acidic medium is it oxidizes lead sulfide pbs lead sulfide is oxidized by h2o2 to lead sulfate and itself h2o2 will reduce to form water so these are the two examples of oxidizing action of h2o2 in acidic medium next i'm taking is reducing action of h2o2 in acidic medium example if we take potassium permanganate which is of purple color when h2o2 is added to this along with an acid then we get manganese sulfate potassium sulfate water and oxygen potassium sulfate manganese sulfate plus this one is changing to water and oxygen h2o2 is doing the reducing action on the potassium permanganate so it this one will itself oxidize to the oxygen since potassium permanganate has changed to manganese sulfate this is colorless this is colorless so purple color or potassium permanganate will discharge when h2o2 is added along with few drops of acid into this this shows that here h2o2 has acted as a uh, this has reduced this potassium permanganate next we have oxidizing action in basic medium if medium is basic then also it can do its oxidizing as well as its reducing action 
Example is if we take manganese sulfate and add H2O2 in a basic medium, base is added here. On adding this, this changes to the sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate. And this manganese changes to manganese dioxide. And H2O2 changes to water. In this reaction, the H2O2 has changed to the water and added the sulfate here to the sodium. This has added into this thing and manganese has changed to MnO2. So this has actually oxidized the manganese sulfate. It has oxidized the manganese sulfate to the manganese dioxide. This has changed to this. This is the oxidizing action of H2O2. Now the balancing of this reaction is 2 will come here, 2 will come here. Previous reaction also, 2, 3, 5, these are the balanced equations. Now next we have is the oxidizing action in basic medium we have done. Now we are doing the reducing action in the basic medium, reducing action in basic medium. H2O2 in basic medium also acts as reducing agent. Example, if we take purple color potassium permanganate and add H2O2 to this, then this will change to MnO2 plus KOH oxygen is evolving out from here this shows that this is actually doing a reducing action plus there's formation of water now we are not adding any base here since potassium hydroxide is formed here that will provide basic medium balanced equation So these are the examples which show that potash, uh, hydrogen peroxide sorry, is acting as oxidizing as well as reducing agent in acidic as well as in basic medium. Second chemical property now, first we have done is oxidizing agent and reducing agent character. Second is bleaching action of H2O2. Since H2O2 is not stable, it can decompose to give nascent oxygen. This oxygen is a nascent oxygen. Immediately, this will act on the colored materials, on the colored matter and will bleach this and it will become colorless. So H2O2 does its bleaching action because of evolution of this nascent oxygen. That is a result of decomposition of H2O2 and this will change the colored material to the colorless one. So these are the two chemical properties of H2O2, oxidizing reducing nature and second is the bleaching action of H2O2. Now we have uses of H2O2. First uses it's a hair bleach. Second uses it's a mild disinfectant also. It's a antiseptic also. And in market it's sold under the name of perhydrol. So perhydrol is also hydrogen peroxide. Next use is, it is used to make high quality detergents. High quality detergents are made from this. It's used as a bleaching agent. It is a bleaching agent for textile, for paper pulp, 
for leather, for oils, for fats, this is a bleaching agent. These are the uses of hydrogen peroxide. After hydrogen peroxide, our topic is heavy water. The formula for heavy water is D2O. In place of H2O, we have D2O because we have a heavier isotope of hydrogen here that is deuterium. Preparation. How heavy water is prepared? By this one method only we are taking by prolonged electrolysis of water. When we do the prolonged electrolysis of water, keep on doing electrolysis of water, then heavy water only is left. That is when ordinary water is electrolyzed. Then H2 is liberated because water will split up to form H plus and OH minus ions and from H plus H2 will form in electrolysis. This is much more readily liberated as compared to D2. So this will not let the D2 to form. This forms first. The reason for this thing is because H plus has small size. So it is moving fast. So quickly combines. It will quickly combine to form H2. So when we are doing electrolysis of ordinary water, then H2 will be liberated because of these reasons that H plus is small in size. So it is moving fast and forming H2. So as electrolysis continues, then heavy water concentration gradually increases because ordinary water has changed to H2 and O2 which have evolved out so ultimately heavy water will be left and then almost pure D2O is obtained so with long electrolysis of ordinary water ultimately heavy water D2O will be left. About 29,000 liter of ordinary water when we do its electrolysis it gives 1 liter of D2O. 1 liter heavy water we get on doing electrolysis of 29,000 of ordinary water. Properties of heavy water similar to that of water only. First, electrolysis. When we do electrolysis of heavy water, like in case of water, when we do electrolysis, we get H2 and O2. So in place of H2, now we have D2 and O2. This is di-deuterium. Second, action of alkali or we can say alkaline earth metals. We can take alkali metal or we can take alkaline earth metals. So when heavy water is reacted with alkali metal like sodium, if we have Na plus water, we know we get NaOH. So here we get NaOD. And plus we get H2. So here we are getting D2. In place of H, we are getting the D. Reactions are similar to that of water. This is sodium deuteroxide. Like in water, it is NaOH sodium hydroxide. This is sodium deuteroxide oxide. If 
alkaline earth metal like calcium is there we get calcium deuterooxide along with the dideuterium here third property action of metallic oxides action of metallic oxides so when metal oxides they act on this like sodium oxide reacts with heavy water if we have water here we get naoh so here we are getting naod sodium deuterooxide we get here next property is action of non metallic oxides if non metallic oxides they react with the heavy water like non metal oxide is phosphorus pentoxide when it reacts with the heavy water if we have the non metal oxide and water we get acid so here also we are getting an acid d3po Four, that is dutero phosphoric acid. Dutero phosphoric acid. If it is P two O five plus water, we get H three P O four phosphoric acid. Now here we have dutero phosphoric acid because we are using heavy water. Last property of heavy water is action of metallic carbides like if we take calcium carbide and add heavy water to it we are getting calcium deuterooxide plus this formation of deutero acetylene acetylene is ch triple bond ch so we are getting here deutero acetylene because we are not taking the normal water here ordinary water we are using heavy water use of heavy water as a moderator in nuclear reactors that is to slow down the speed of fast moving neutrons in nuclear reactors heavy water is used so it is a moderator our last topic in this chapter is dihydrogen as a fuel hydrogen will be an excellent fuel in terms of energy because this gives out enormous amount of energy on burning it releases approximately 3 times more energy as compared to same mass of petrol and only pollutant on burning dihydrogen is nitrogen because it is present as impurity in hydrogen but there are limitations in using dihydrogen as a fuel the first limitation is the mass of container in which we have to store hydrogen that will be 30 times than the tank of petrol so such big heavy mass containers are required to store hydrogen another problem in using hydrogen as a fuel is hydrogen gas is converted to hydrogen liquid by cooling it to a temperature of 20 kelvin so this would require expensive insulated tanks so the cost of that hydrogen as a fuel will be very high if we are using the 
hydrogen we need very big size containers and then it has to be cooled to a 20 kelvin temperature for that we need very expensive insulated tanks so researchers are looking for alternative techniques to use hydrogen efficiently and that is called hydrogen economy so what is hydrogen economy the proposal to use hydrogen as a fuel in industry power plants and in homes is called hydrogen economy so the principle of this is production of hydrogen its storage and transportation of hydrogen to use it in the form of liquid or in a gaseous form and nowadays we are using hydrogen in the fuel cells for generation of electricity and then to store hydrogen we can store it by forming interstitial hydrides that we have covered up in this chapter that in the interstitial spaces of the metals this hydrogen gets absorbed and in this way we can store it.